She can also grab them by the arm and swing them around, throwing them into other enemies. And if the enemy has a gun, which a couple of types of zombies do, cop and murder, murder look like their army or something. Those throw grenades and have Gatling guns. It's not as exciting as it sounds, trust me. The cop ones have a regular pistol and a shotgun. And those you can break the arm off of. All of these are an instant kill. In this game, to me, there is nothing more fun than just racking up combos of wrestling. Any map lets you know th when there are enemies terribly nearby, and you can just shake the nunchuck, have a run into an enemy, do a wrestling move, move on to the next enemy. This goes incredibly fast, because each wrestling move takes about one second from start to finish, and then you can move on to the next one. That's one thing about this game. At its best, it is very fast. You can even do wrestling moves on non-humanoid enemies. You know those fast-running little bastards that you hate in any game that they appear because they're so difficult to hit and you have to chase them down sometimes? In this, do the wrestling thing, and once she's run into it, she will place her foot on top of it, holding it in place, and then you just shake the nunchuck, and she will beat it, ending with you giving it a direct right hook, sending it flying. This is a lot of fun. If this sounds appealing to you, try not to do what I did and play her first. Save her for a little later. As soon as I was done playing Asaki, I mean for all the other three characters, I was kind of bored with the game. I mean, once you realize that it's the same thing over and over, then you had better hope that you're playing as a character that you enjoy killing the enemy as, because otherwise it's just tedious and incredibly repetitive. The areas are all entirely linear. The zombies seem almost entirely uninterested in you. I guess I was expecting at least somewhat of a challenge, but even if I hadn't been, I would still think that these are far too easygoing zombies. You can actually run past a bunch of them if you want. There are times when you can't. Iron fencing will come up, locking you into a specific area, and you have to kill all the zombies within that area, keeping in mind that more might appear as the fight progresses, before you're let out. At any time, if you want to fight more zombies, you can just go in and out of an area, and when you're back into the area that you've just left, all the zombies that were there before are now there again. Any level can take as long as you want it to, and if you don't try to prolong it, not a single one of the eight chapters will take more than half an hour. Unless you die and have to replay or something, but that hardly ever happens. For both free play and survival, you can play as two players on split screen. In free play, you can basically play the areas that you've already unlocked in the storyline mode. As you progress, you'll of course fight tougher and sometimes also bigger enemies. The mud men are kind of frustrating to play against as anyone other than Saki because Again, she can just really easily dispatch of them with a very kick-ass move. She'll reach into its chest and pull out, I guess it's supposed to be an organ of it or something, and those can actually help you. I guess they're supposed to contain baneful blood. I'll get back to that in a sec. During all this fighting, of course, blood sprays everywhere, including often on the camera lens. If your sword gets entirely covered with blood, and there's a meter letting you know, it will get stuck inside an enemy and you have to pull it out. You can shake the blood off, and there are two moves to do this. The entirely thorough one that leaves you vulnerable and may cost you combos, and the swift one that doesn't take all of it off and that you have to do after certain attacks. Now, if your character gets entirely covered in blood, she'll go into a rampage because of the baneful blood. In rampage mode, you're faster, you're stronger, 
but your health gradually drains. Also, you have much less defense. I don't think you'll ever actually leave a rampage unless the player himself or herself does something to stop the rampage. There are these goddess statues that will completely remove all of the blood that you're covered in. By the way, there's a meter letting you know how close you are to a rampage. And you can pick up, I think, three tops pieces of these goddess statues. And those will lower the meter. And if you're in rampage, lowering the meter will take you out of rampage. Those are the two healthy ways of leaving rampage. The third is simply to let your health run out and die. Don't use that one. Yeah, basically, once you're in Rampage, you'll either die, or you yourself will leave Rampage. Or you'll complete the level, in which case it'll just end. You won't start the next level in Rampage. If you ever get lost, like if you've just been locked inside the metal fencing, and have now made your way out, you can always check the map, and that will usually keep you from getting lost. If not, and you enter an area that you were in before, you'll have to fight your way through the same, at least the metal fencing areas, once again. Anyway, the bloody stump that you can pull out of Mudmen comes in handy for Rampage. It can raise your Rampage level if you're not in Rampage yet, and if you are in Rampage, it will give you a health boost. And you also have independent healing items that you can use whether or not you're in Rampage. The game really doesn't set a mood. I mean, parts of the story can be kind of disturbing, but while you never see any people, and every area you go to is essentially fairly close to something we can recognize as an area in the Western world, you know, cities, there's a graveyard, by the way, when you play the storylines, there's not always something connecting any two chapters. It isn't quite like in Silent Hill, where everything would be quaint if it wasn't so abandoned and thus really creepy. I guess it's because they don't play up the abandoned thing that much. You know how in Resident Evil, you can tell that there's been battle. You know, you can tell zombies were here and they claimed victims. And there were people here and they fought back with all of the passion, all of the will to live that they could muster. And you know how in Silent Hill everything is not entirely like everything was just left, you know, five minutes ago. There is this sense of genuine abandonment, you know. In Silent Hill, an area feels like life left this place and ain't coming back. In this game, it's kind of like whoever should be here just went to lunch. The zombies and various creatures are well designed enough. In both free play and survival mode, you get to choose two of the four characters that you can run around as, and you can switch back and forth whenever you want. The zombies just aren't terribly imposing, and I think it's mainly their behavior. I mean, they will attack you... eventually. You know, some of them run around with a knife, lead pipe, maybe even a gun that they'll hardly ever use, and much more seldom actually hit you with. I don't know, when you come upon a game that doesn't mind if you're more or less just running through a level ignoring every enemy other than when you're locked into an area until you defeat them, it just feels like the game developers didn't care. I mean, you can maybe have a mode like that, but the main story mode, I mean, the storylines feel like free play, basically. Other than the fact that you don't get to use two characters in the storyline, 
and that there are details of the story in between the levels and sometimes in the levels.